we've got Jesse Baker, the founder of Provenance, and Francois Suchet, uh, who heads up Make Fashion Circular at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Oh, Hello you, to Francois. you both. I need to lean over a bit. <laughs> Don't you move, Jesse, you're fine. <laughs> Are you having a good day so far? Yeah, it's been great, amazing. And, and you've just uh, um, come off the stage, Jesse, talking about provenance, and yes. we'll maybe talk a bit more specifically about what, what you actually do with that. But firstly, we've been circling around it in the studio. I recently saw a video of someone explaining blockchain to a five-year-old. Oh, really? And I wasn't, I wasn't that impressed, <laughs> I've got to be honest. I mean, maybe that shows more about me than yeah. the person explaining. How would you do it? It's really complicated. I think what's, why it's difficult to explain what blockchains are is because they're basically un unseen, right? I think unseen technologies are always quite complicated to understand, like artificial intelligence or even the internet itself, mm. right? I mean, if I had to say, do you know exactly how the internet works? Like, please don't. Maybe say that. not. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think people kind of beat themselves up on trying to really understand exactly how blockchains work, and maybe that you don't really need that. But I think, um, yeah, sort of crux of how I explain them to people is it's a new, new type of database. Um, but instead of being centrally controlled and owned, it's now shared and, and decentralized. Um, and that means it's not governed by just one centralized authority, but governed by a network. Um, and, and the setup exhibits some interesting properties, like um, the data in there can't be changed or altered. Um, and you kind of get rid of the copy-paste function that the internet has, has meant that it's quite difficult to trust data peer-to-peer. -peer. So, yeah, essentially new type of database that's shared, uh, inclusive, everyone can be part of it, and exhibit some cool properties to allow us to trust data through a network. What are the two or three really exciting examples of what you guys do with blockchain that bring that to life a bit for people as well? Yeah, so I mean, obviously lots of people are creating applications on blockchains, and the most famous ones are usually financial, like like Bitcoin, creating programmable money on top of a blockchain, pretty cool. Um, but what we're doing and, and many others are, are, are making essentially uh, you know, different applications on top of a blockchain that may be slightly more complex than just transferring uh, money to, to you. So uh, we're doing, uh, we're using the blockchain to, to create a, um, a virtual representation of material so that we can model material value uh, digitally. Uh, I mean, that I can transfer a valuable material to you and that the network could reflect that transfer of value. Uh, and we're doing that because we think it's a really interesting way to make supply chains more transparent and inclusive and enable us to all know more information about where products come from. Um, but increasingly, people are using it for all kinds of things and mashing together net, you know, applications. So like at Provenance, we uh, can mash together the tracking of materials on a blockchain with the proof of a farmer owning land, for example. And that too can be uh, stored in a blockchain. Um, so yeah, the, the kind of possibilities are insane, really, when you start to mash everything together. That's pretty much how I explained it earlier, right? It's, uh, yeah. it's quite eerie how similar it's <laughs> to uh, Francois, um, we'll talk about perhaps how tech could relate to fashion um, in just a moment, but you, you uh, lead the Make Fashion Circular initiative. Uh, what is that? So Make Fashion Circular is a, is, is a systemic initiative of the foundation. So our goal is to create unstoppable momentum towards the circular economy for clothes over a three-year period starting now. And, and to do that, we bring um, actors from the fashion industry, ranging from raw materials producers, uh, manufacturers, brands, collectors, and recyclers, with uh, cities, philanthropists, other NGOs who have in-depth expertise and experience in the space to maximize the learnings that, that we can have and drive action towards a new system. And what about technology? Will this sort of technology save the fashion industry? Yeah, so if you, if you think about what circular economy for fashion could mean, we see it as three things. The first thing is new business model, so clothes are used more. The second thing is materials input that are safe and renewable. And the third thing is solution, so used clothes are turned into new ones. And you can think, and I, I, I leave the technologist in your <laughs> reflect on that, but in a way, for each of them, you have a tremendous opportunity for technology to make that simple. If you want new business model to increase clothing utilization, well, how do you trace it? How do you make sure that it's not lost? How do you make sure that you understand when it's worn, when it's not worn? If you have materials input, it requires a lot of effort to create material cycling that are safe, bringing in healthy materials. If you can maintain this understanding throughout the lifespan of the garment, it's, it's extremely valuable. And the last thing is today what prevents a lot of that recycling to happen at scale is things are lost 
it's basically going to landfill or is being burned. And 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 that waste stream today is extremely complex. You have different types of materials that are mixed together. You have different chemicals that are used to make those clothes that are toxic or contain um, nasty chemicals like heavy metals. And, and all that prevents that recycling to reach scale. And so if you have a way to gain transparency and clarity in what's happening throughout the lifespan of the, of the garment, then you can probably accelerate towards the circular economy faster. And, and Jesse, just uh, we unfortunately to wrap up, but um, a, close, a close on the blockchain, yeah? yeah. Definitely. I, I, I definitely think it's, it's a possibility. I think, um, I mean, we're already tracking uh, products and making them transparent in the fashion industry. But I think for me, the big challenge is not doing that uh, and then opening that data and making it flow through a network. It's in creating the right incentives. And that's why I believe blockchains are so interesting, not just because it creates a global shared database, but because it fundamentally comes with an economic incentive to do so in, in tokens and in crypto economics. That, that is the thing, the juice, the blood of the application. And I think if we can create something where you incentivize uh, sustainability and circularity fundamentally in the incentive structure, then I, I, I think it could work at scale. Thank you both like for joining plan. us. Yeah, let's just do it. <laughs>